to click on them. So there's there's Roger McNabb and his cardboard or his uh, the paper and so on. Oh, and uh, and there's there's our experts. Oh, nice. Ah, that, okay. So you just see my screen. That's fine. Okay. Uh, and 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 we had a whole bunch of uh, plants that they they uh, grew for us. Um, and, and so this is one attempt to get um, pollinators on the trail. This this actually is the opening of the second st uh, uh, section of the trail, which runs from uh, Prince of Wales to Salt Marsh Road. And on that section, we tried to be clever, and we actually hydro seeded them. Um, uh, wildflowers along with a, 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 a sheep fescue grass which are, it grows in clumps and doesn't drown out things. It was not a total success. I think we got colt's foot and um, goldenrod and sort of white asters which were probably going to grow anyway but the rest didn't come up. Anyway we, we, we keep trying. Uh, where am I? So here we are. Can you see that now? Yes. Yes. This is a test for you. Now, what, what, what are we looking at? Milkweed. Milkweed and a monarch butterfly. And a, and a monarch butterfly, yeah. And, that, and that, that's when people think they talk about host plants, that's what they um, consider. So there's a, a monarch butterfly egg underneath the milkweed, either singly or just a couple. There's the monarch caterpillar, which is, is quite an attractive caterpillar. Uh, a few years ago, like two or three or whatever pre-COVID was, we had a, a bloom of these things, which are the, the milkweed tusk, moth, tusk moths, which look uh, quite attractive. But in fact, when they're in a big group, they're awful. And they were they really stripped the, the milkweed very quickly, took all the leaves off and actually killed the stems too. So I spent mm -hmm. a long time squadging them with uh, wearing gloves. Uh, I just want to show you this. What can you see there? A branch with some sort of berries or something. Yeah, it's neat, isn't it? That that is actually a monarch butterfly, and there's this um, two pathways for the monarch butterflies. One fly down to Mexico, which is on our, our side, but on the other side of the continent, they actually fly down just to California. And th this was a picture taken just south of Monterey, there near to Carmel. There's a park there, and this is where they overwinter. So if you look at them closely, the whole thing oh, is beautiful. Is, is, oh yeah, wow. butterflies. And we we were down there in January a few years back, and they were all still resting there. But apparently, in, in a month or two, when they take the flight, the, the air is full of these monarchs fluttering around, which is oh. must be absolutely tremendous to see. Uh, so uh, the the mimic of the monarch is is what? Have you come? You all know that. Viceroy. The viceroy, exactly. So sort of stand in for the king, stand in for the monarch, you know, the viceroy. The viceroy of India was the, the when we still had the Raj and the empire, the viceroy Montgomery was there standing in for the king. And, and they look very, very similar. What's the difference, do you know? It's yeah. not, not very easy. The, to spot. The, dots, the dots along the edge, the bottom edge, I think are different. Not really. The, the no? main difference is that line. You see, you, you, mm -hmm. if, so if you look on the one on the at the bottom on the right hand side, there's the, just in from the back of the wing, there's a curving line. And if you look at the one on the right, there isn't. Um, and then at the one up, uh, up top um, towards the bottom, sorry, running from sort of eight o'clock to four o'clock and curving down to six o'clock, there's that line there. And that is the, um, uh, the that is apart from size, the, the, the viceroys are just a little bit shorter. Uh, shorter, smaller, uh, and and this is this is mimicry, isn't it? You know that the, these look like the monarchs. The monarchs are distasteful to the uh, to the birds and so on, and these look like monarchs, so the birds leave those alone. Uh, that at least is what people say. Um, these uh, the 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 um, viceroy eats willow, and that's pretty nasty tasting too. Apparently, not that I've tried it. Uh, okay, so that that there's the monarch, right? Uh, this is the other large black and uh, yellow uh, butterfly. A any idea what that is? It's the fritillary. Oh. And, yeah, and there, there are a whole bunch of fritillaries actually. Um, and fritillary from the Latin, apparently, meaning a dice box. So they're covered, these dots um, are supposed to look like dice. So I think fritillary and fritter 
and all that stuff, uh, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, to do with dyes. I, I've tried to look that up. I was, I, I would imagine that the Romans used to have a place where you went down to play dice called the Fertillery, and it seems a great idea, but I haven't found anyone to suggest that, so maybe I, I will suggest. Anyway, the Fertillery. Anybody know what the, now how am I going to get, oh, that's easy. How, anybody know what the, the host plant of the Fertillery is? It's there. And there's a clue, there's a couple of clues in the picture. Violet. Violet. Violets, exactly, yeah, exactly, the violets. Um, and it's the, 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 on the violet plants, they're using them as, you know, the, to, to eat. So there's the, uh, oh, I can use this thing, can't I? Um, the caterpillar. Um, uh, but by the time the caterpillars come out, often the, all the flowers have gone. And this thing I took a picture of in my yard and I was moving some violets from one place, keep moving things around. And I put them down by the fence and I stood back from the fence and this thing actually flew in. I thought, my God, that's brilliant. Anyway, so uh, and um, we've planted uh, violets on the trail uh, and I have a friend in Fredericton who has unlimited numbers of violets. So if anybody needs a line on violets, I can get them, you know, by the bucket for them. Uh, another butterfly. Any idea what that is? I mean, it's on echinacea and unfortunately echinacea is is not quite within our zone, but I'm growing echinacea in my yard and the butterflies love it. Uh, they're things called painted ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Speak up then. You, you missed the prize. Uh, and there's not too much difference. There's an American lady and there's a painted lady. Uh, and, and the way to tell them and don't write any of this down, but uh, the, the um, Painted lady has four dots there, four eye spots on the on the undersurface of the wing, um, and the American lady has two bigger ones. Um, anyway, painted ladies. Uh, so, uh, the host plant of the painted lady. Anybody recognise this thing? Pearly everlasting. A definite prize, yeah. Pearly everlasting. Mm -hmm. um, I've tried to grow that from seed, and it doesn't grow very well. But it actually self set just on the trail by the bird. Uh, viewing pattern, which is brilliant. There was some there last year, and there's also some by um, um, Bill Mallory's uh, sort of private pathway onto the trail at the, the end of the road there. So I have that growing in my yard. Do you uh, really? Super. Yeah, and I can share it. I've transplanted it successfully. Have you? Brilliant. Yeah, I found some up on the the Moose Alley going to Fredericton and dug some up and it not only did it not survive on the trail, but where I dug it up, didn't come back afterwards. So I felt oh, quite guilty know. about it. <laughs> so th this, this one here has two big eye spots and the two big eye spots are the, um, the um, American lady. Um, uh, and I remember it just because they ha they're they big, bigger than we are. Uh, where are we? And I've got this thing here anyway, which if, if you should wish to uh, remember. So the big eye spots on the, uh, and it's much easier to tell on, on, on the underwing, the big eye spots of the American lady, the four little ones are the uh, painted lady. And then they, they point out that there's a little dot there and you know, good luck to be able to see that. <laughs> um, next, next one is the what? Black swallowtail. I'm getting all the answers. OK, this is the black swallowtail, a beautiful butterfly, isn't it? Mm. It has beautiful caterpillars, too. Um, and this, the, the, the caterpillar has this thing that pops out of its forehead. If it gets startled, these suddenly <laughs> pop up, which is, uh, which is interesting to see. Host plants of this. Any ideas? The, the mem can't say that again. Fireweed? Is it fireweed I, back I there? Can't hear. I was I thinking can't hear. it looked like fireweed. It loves our uh, parsley. No, 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 it's parsley. It's that's right. It's one of them. I mean, it, it, it's it's the carrot family of which there are many members, um, including giant hogweed, Ouch. which is, is there. And I just thought I'd put those pictures in. These dreadful blisters that you get from hogweed, and there's a guy spraying it. Uh, hogweed is actually an import. It was brought into the country uh, or into the continent, I think, in the late 1800s 
as an ornamental yeah. plant, can yeah. you believe? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it should be reported as an invasive to be removed. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, and don't go near the stuff. Uh, so there's, there's, there's a, uh, where am I now? Oh, not there. So the, the, the plant that's usually suggested as the, as the host plant for the uh, black swallowtail is okay. Queen Anne's lace, which is this. Uh, if you're a purist, Queen Anne's lace is actually an introduced species too. Came in a couple of hundred or more years ago. Um, th this thing is called Golden Alexander, which is not a bad looking uh, flower. I'm growing that in the garden. Uh, the, the swallowtails don't seem to like it. And I had one fly over my head and fly onto the parsley. Uh, so they've, they've come to prefer sort of European junk food. And uh, <laughs> uh, I, so I, I was talking to Richard uh, the other day about introdu introduced, uh, you know, uh, out of uh, country uh, plants. What what do you think about growing parsley? And, and so it's it's the carrot family. So it's parsley and dill and fennel and that sort of stuff, which they like, and they certainly like it in the garden. And you don't need very much actually, because. Uh, for the last two years, Chris Lister, and I don't know whether you know Chris, but she has a great garden, but it's mainly in pots. And she had a pot of um, parsley growing by a back door, and she had three or four um, black swallowtail caterpillars on it, which she didn't want because they were eating the parsley. So they gave, she gave them to me, uh, and I put them on the, the not on the native plant rather than the, the non-native plant. I put them on the uh, the stuff, this golden Alexander, and they didn't do well at all. So I think they preferred the uh, the uh, uh, the parsley. Um, right, this this is interesting. What's in a name? Um, Sweet Sicily. Uh, Sweet Sicily is a host plant of the black swallowtail. Sweet Sicily has a, an aniseedy taste. So the um, deer don't like it. They won't eat it. It's great. It's, so it's um, uh, and it, it has a nice uh, white flowers in, in the spring, so they're, you know, helpful for pollination. This friend with all the the, uh, the violets in Fredericton has got masses of this in the garden. It's it's swell, it's, it spreads quite well. So how I, tall, I how, how tall Sorry? does it grow? Does it grow? It goes three or four feet. Just wait till the end of my story, though, because I planted some on the trail. And then partly for your fault, I started looking these things up. And sweet Sicily is applied to more than one plant. And the plant I put was on the one on the left hand side, uh, which is Miris odorata, which is uh, which is used as a sweetener as well. Um, and that is a European plant. Uh, and the, the, the sweet Sicily, the native is this one on the right hand side, which doesn't look as attractive. It's, it certainly still smells of aniseed and I think could be uh, the deer wouldn't eat it, and certainly apparently has been used as a sweetener. They used to apparently grow it by your cottage door, at least one of them, but please don't you, you use either until you've really checked it, because, you know, I mean, this name's just thrown around and it's probably something equally dreadful. Anyway, so I'm, I haven't been able to get, so this Osmoriza, I, I haven't found seeds for, I'll, I'll look for some time. Uh, what is your thoughts to Richard about the, uh, the lovely sweet Sicily there, which I, I wouldn't mind in the garden, although it tends to to spread apparently. Um, should, should I dig it up on the trail and got the other one? <coughs> it is quite invasive. Right? It's, I don't think it belongs on the trail. Right. Well, I, I was thinking the same actually. It did disappoint him because it's it's nice looking plant. So I, I, I only planted it l last summer so I can dig it up again when it appears or pull it out and put the other one. Now Pardon you have a mail for some reason. I have a I'll question. Go. Yeah. Just quickly, do the deer dislike both of those equally? I, I would think so. Yeah, I, I, the, the, the deer don't like smelly plants, eh? So the I, I would think the aniseed for either. Now the deer will eat absolutely anything, won't they? Uh, because uh, I, we planted milkweed on the trail, and they nibbled the tops to try. But the the, the thing that struck me was I, I have some uh, mon um, monk's hood, monk's hood, which I was going up near the house, and I thought it's terrible to have it near to the house where my grandchildren or my grandchildren's or my children's dogs might eat it. So I dug it up and put it in pots and I was going to hide it down the bottom of the yard. I left the pots on, on the patio outside and something nibbled the tops off 
uh, of the manhood, which is really toxic. Uh, now, I, I don't know, I, I would imagine whatever nibbled at it went away and uh, had a nice long sleep, but uh, uh, anyway, so uh, I, th I think if it could be contained, I mean, I'm, I'm growing milkweed in the garden and I certainly can contain that, or so he says, so far I've contained it by just pulling up the shoots when they come out. And it's, an, it's, it's a nice looking plant, but it's a shame I've got unlimited supplies of it, just like I've got unlimited supplies of violets. Right, okay, so anyway, uh, this I suppose this what this one we should plant if we want to. Mm -hmm. But what what about putting things like dill and yeah, parsley yeah. stuff like that on the trail, Richard? I'm looking upon you as my expert. Mm -hmm. Also, we just uh, I'm, I'm not really uh, an expert in all of this, but just in, in sort of ecological <laughs> terms, is this the right I thing? Would, I would much prefer to see. Um, common native plants, uh, more yeah. of the common native plants on the trail rather than introducing uh, yeah. Yeah. horticultural um, yeah. herbs and so on. Yeah, so everybody should grow extra parsley in their yard, plant for yourself and then plant twice as much. And, and we have been putting more parsley in for that reason actually in the, in the, in the garden. Right. Next, I think I've plugged that. What's this one? Admiral. Red Admiral. Admiral. A red Admiral. Why is it called a Red Admiral? Got orange on it. <laughs> the reason it's called a Red Admiral is because a while back it used to be called the Red Admiral. And nobody like me could say Admiral. So it ended up being Red Admiral. It's got ah. nothing to do with the Navy at all. Ah. <laughs> so the host plant for the Red Admiral, Adm Admiral, uh, nettles, uh, and this this is a, a false nettle, which is which is uh, North American. Um, I've got seeds for it; they're teeny little seeds. I've got, I've got them in the. Actually, you don't need them in the bridge, but I'm going to plant them fairly soon. I tried a year or two ago, and nothing happened. Uh, they, they sort of grow down by the stream beds and things like that. So that's uh, the red admiral. There, okay, so we, we the herbaceous plants, you know, uh, we talked about some of them, uh, um, host plants. Uh, trees, uh, a lot of butterflies use trees as uh, a host plants. And here again is which butterfly? No, that's not, that's a monarch. Mon no. no, it's a viceroy. Viceroy, why? Because of the uh, line. That line there, that line there. That's that really in the size, and I've seen the two together. And this one is a bit smaller, but that's it. So the 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 uh, host plant for the this um, the viceroy, the willows and poplars. And as I was saying, willows, uh, you know, may have a nasty taste, so maybe it doesn't need to look like uh, the the monarch. It may taste awful anyway. Um, any idea what that one is? Wow, oh. pretty, pretty. Sorry. It is it is a, a, a morning cloak or um, mm -hmm. which, are, which are, you know, quite common in, uh, around here. And they're also in Europe and in England, it's called the uh, Camberwell Beauty, which sounds yeah, morning, cloak, morning cloak, you know, sort of not sure they're in morning or thing you wore in the morning. Again, willow is there, willow, elm, poplar and, and birch. Uh, another one. Tiger swallowtail, yeah. Tiger. Right. Uh, again, willow, ash, birch. We've, uh, we've got willow around. We got we planted some birch on the trail. Linden, you know, the linden or basswood tree. Yeah. Another one. I didn't bother putting it in because it's all the same. This is the the white admiral because it looks like the red admiral. Uh, and again, it's uh, uh, willows and 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 birch. There, some, something that we should be seeing fairly soon are, are these um, azure, what are they, azure grey or azure? The little blue. Spring azure, spring azure, the little blue blue butterflies. They're blue on the inside and when they fold the wings up, they're grey. And these are, uh, th those are the, the trees that they look. Right. This thing, I don't think this is my picture. I think I stole this. This is a, a, a butterfly called a harvest of butterfly. 
And this is, uh, or the caterpillars of this are the only carnivorous um, caterpillars that we have on this side of the Atlantic. Um, and these uh, harvester caterpillars feed on aphids, woolly aphids. And there you can see this sort of, sort of slug-like caterpillar at the bottom. Uh, you can see the woolly aphids uh, wandering around at the top and on the sides. And you can see an ant there. And the ants, of course, uh, sort of herd um, the woolly aphids to collect their honeydew. And apparently the, the harvester caterpillar uh, puts the dead skins of the, or the dead shells, I guess, of the um, aphids on itself to protect it from the, uh, uh, the attacks by the ants. So it's, it's a harsh world out there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any idea, Darius? I mean, seeing that coming at you in the night would scare the pants off you. <laughs> that, that is actually the chrysalis of the uh, harvester butterfly or harvester caterpillar. Looks really evil. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, butterflies uh, have a proboscis, they don't have teeth or anything like that, so they need liquid. Uh, uh, they're on a liquid diet. Um, so you can see the, uh, where's that? That's, that's a, a, a come on, come on, come on. It's, it's the other yellow butterfly. That's terrible, a frit fritillary. Uh, and you can see it's proboscis coming down, that little <coughs> line coming down to, uh, to get the nectar from the plant. Um, that is the, the morning clock. And somebody mentioned the morning clock about trees to me. Uh, so um, butterflies also eat sap off, off trees <clears throat> and they also eat uh, whatever they find on the ground. So they puddle in mud, they eat uh, bird and animal droppings, you know, when, when they liquefy dead animals, when they liqu liquefy, they, they use it. So they, um, and I, I think this is just having a rest, but it could be puddling. Puddling is uh, a number of butterflies do it, usually the males. And they they get into mud and they get the um, uh, minerals out of the mud, which the males particularly need, apparently. Uh, yeah. This is another oh, wow. <laughs> thing from your nightmares. You made uh, that up. <laughs> I did not, I did not. It's called a calyptra and it's, uh, uh, it, this, this only fairly recently was discovered in uh, Siberia to be, uh, it's sometimes described as a vampire butterfly. It actually sucks blood of animals and, uh, and, and humans too. Uh, and I think they're, they're over, the, over the rest of the world or in, they're in Africa and they're also in North America, although the North American ones have not so far become vampiric. Um, and they sort of, I, they're, they're butterflies that have a, they've changed their mouth parts some so that they're much harder and they're able to pierce the, the uh, skin of fruit. So they're sort of fruit sucking. Um, now I'm saying butterflies. Uh, I, I, I have, so there's butterflies and moths. Anybody know the difference between butterflies and moths? Yes. Tell me. One flies with their, lands with their wings open and one lands with their wings closed. That's right. Thing. That's right, looking at them. What's, yeah. what's a big difference looking at this thing? Is this a butterfly or a moth? I can't tell. I'm it's a moth because of the antennae. Antenna. Antennae, that's right. The butterflies yeah. have very simple antennae uh, with just a little ball at the end and, and moths have all sorts of uh, wonderful appendages there. Yeah. So, and there's some, some uh, prof in Lafayette, I think she is, who's doing research, research into these things. Uh, and she, the, I, I think these are the possibly the local ones. And it's as it says there, feeding on Dr. Jennifer Zaspel's thumb. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cute. So, you know, wake up and, you know, magnify that a few times. Wait, that, like, I put that in your bedroom and my God, I'd die on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, the, uh, obviously butterflies also eat like, like rotting fruit. Um, and I have not tried doing either of these, but, you know, hanging up fruit in a basket and there's melons there. People sometimes just put melon, when they finish with the melon, you know, just put the skin outside. I've got a, a, a bird feeder or a bird bath like this. And, I, and, and again, when it was reading around to talk to you, I came across this and that, that's a good idea. 
Um, this thing I have tried actually. So this is a, a mash for butterflies. So they're overripe bananas, brown sugar, yeast and dark beer. And you make this sort of taste. You leave it overnight, sort of ferment a little bit. And then you can either put it in dishes outside or you, uh, and I, I, what I did a year or two or three ago was paint it on some trees. And the, and the thing article I was reading says, you know, go out at night with a flashlight and the tree will be covered in moths. It wasn't, but it might have been a bad night. I don't know. But moths apparently have a phenomenal sense of smell. So uh, I, I think I'm going to try it again. I was reading that sort of male, some male moth can detect the pheromones on a female seven, uh, seven miles away. So it's worth a try. So if anybody wants the recipe, I can <laughs> give it to them. But there it is. Um, and then what's that? Ooh. Luna. Luna and moths. Luna moths. Yep. Yeah, the moths. And, and what, what's particular about the lunar moths feeding habit? I don't know. The sad thing is it doesn't. The sad thing is, you know, it's, it's an egg for, I don't know, 10 days, two weeks. Then it's a caterpillar for a few weeks. And then it's a chrysalis, uh, which up in our part of the world can be up to nine months. And down south where they have more. And so they only have one cycle a year. Down south, it can, you know, it can come out sooner. So it comes out after its nine months stay. It wanders around having a heck of a time for a week and then it dies. It hasn't got time to feed and it doesn't have mouth parts, huh. which I find <clears throat> a rather sad story, actually. Has <laughs> uh, anybody seen these? Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was going into Cummings uh, one evening, what, some summer, a few years ago. And one landed on my trouser leg, came into Cummings, and that it's still on my trousers, came out of Cummings, got off my trousers and went out again. I guess it had seen the world. Of, you know, it's, right. So uh, this, I, this is something put out by the people in Maine. Uh, and I think this is really useful, actually. I've, I've, I've just got the, the top bit of the... I think it's about three pages, but I've got the top bit and the bottom bit and just stuck them together. But I, it's, it lists off all sorts of, uh, uh, of plants. We, I, I don't know whether you can see them, but, the, but they're, they're all local plants. Uh, and I think this will be very, very useful to have. So I, I've put the website at the top there, but I can uh, put, post the website or give you the website or whatever. But I think it's a, I think the, the, this, I, I found this very useful. I'll, I'll share that on our uh, website. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Stephanie. Great, great. Thanks. Uh, this thing uh, looks very bitty, but I got this from Scots a little while back. It's the list of all their shrubs, um, along with the prices and so on, and descriptions. I've got it's about six pages of it. I carefully have gone through making it look like this. But so all the ones that are non-native, I've highlighted in blue. Uh, and the ones that are, are, are native are in yellow, and they're really there are far more um, non-native than native, but uh, there's still a lot of, of, of native ones there. So I think this also is a, a useful thing to have. And again, I, I can let you, I, I just I, I mail it to somebody and uh, I can, I, in fact, I can mail you the, the one with uh, all my thinking out, but I, if, if that's, that would be useful. So yes. I think definitely. So that okay, that come in <laughs> focus. So this is the bird table that we built last year. Mm -hmm. It's we made it wheelchair accessible. Um, we have done some planting in there. The tree in the front there, in front of the steps, is a red maple. You can't really see anything much behind, but we've got a, a linden tree behind. You know, the linden tree is a, is a, is a, is a bird tree. There's one in. The, in, in uh, the the park, uh, not Fenwick Park. Fenwick Park is in Boston. Isn't it? What's what's uh, the park along at the end of Water Street? I keep blanking out. Langmaid. Uh, Langmaid. Langmaid. Why did I say? Langmaid. Yeah. Well, just as you come to the start of Langmaid Park, there's a linden tree there. Yeah. And if you stand in there and in the spring, the, the the tree is just humming. You know, it's like being under a generator. It's full of bees. Um, and it's also as it was was the host plant for those spring uh, azure butterflies and, and I'm sure other butterflies. So we've got that planted in there. 
uh, we've planted some um, viburnum, ar arrowwood viburnum, which the deer did not touch, and they're, and they're, uh, they're uh, the, in the in the spring. The, the flowers are uh, pollinating or uh, nectar producing, and then they have berries later on in the year for the birds. So we were planting for birds and for butterflies and for bees and so on. And we also got nine bark, which is another thing that the deer, that we haven't actually got that out of the pot. If you see the steps, there's a pot behind it. I dug that out of my garden last year and never got around to actually sticking the ground, but it's got buds on it this year, so I think all's well. And again, that has uh, flowers and it has berries for the birds. Uh, we've also got some a couple of clumps of birch trees up there, and I, as I mentioned, we planted uh, milkweed in front of the platform, and that uh, was nibbled by the deer and it's coming back, and the, uh, uh, you know, a, a number of others, including um, sweet Sicily, which Richard's going to make me dig up. Our uh, deer actually love nine mark, nine do, mark. Yeah, yes. I know. It, it, the, nowhere does it say these are deer proof. It always says deer resistant or whatever, doesn't it? And the darn things, you know, you, you, and, and they don't touch anything for years and then they do. We've also got bayberries in there uh, for the birds. Uh, and, and I think they should be, they've got leathery leaves. They're really strong smelling. They're things you make bayberry candles out of. Um, uh, and and I, I, I'm optimistic the deer won't get them. Oh, okay, this is what I'm talking about. So that's that's yeah. what we planted there as I gabbled on. Uh, Obedient plant they left alone. That's that's a neat, neat plant. So those at the bottom are all natives. Uh, this is what we're hoping to plant this, or planning to plant this uh, coming year. Uh, the forestry school in uh, Fredericton gave us uh, about 25 butternut trees and we've supplemented them with a, 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 a few more. Uh, there are um, butterflies that actually uh, use walnut trees and this is a white walnut that has a host plant. Service berries, we have the, you know, the Saskatoon berries and those sort of things. Uh, flowers and berries obviously for the birds. Uh, we've got some oaks to plant. And those are what, and I'm glad that Joe is there because Joe is our treasurer and, and he's, he's quite, you know, tight fisted would uh, would be putting it mildly, but I would like to buy some button bush, button bush, summer sweet and potentilla this year. We've tried sumac in the past, the deer have eaten it, but we've got some protection now. We've also tried it elderberry in the past and the deer have eaten those. Uh, right, I, uh, am I running out of time? This, this, this is this is me becoming political now. This is a view over our bird watching platform onto the sewage lagoon there, or the wastewater treatment facility, we should call it. You can't see them, but they're bufflehead ducks in there. But I, I asked the, the town last year um, if they would mind not mowing some of this and letting things grow up, uh, because I think this is a tremendous waste of space. Uh, there's a there's a, a track that runs around it. So it would be nice if they would let this either grow wild or if they would maybe mow it at the end of the summer or mm -hmm. and, and, and let things grow because I think this would be a, um, a terrific nature preserve. Uh, and that, that's the view the other way. So this uh, comes in, there it is again. And there, if with the eye of faith, you can see a whole bunch of buffalo head mm -hmm. ducks. And it is the eye of faith. So as part of the campaign, this is, this is um, from the Treatment Plant Operators magazine, required reading for everybody. Uh, and, I was going, and, and this is talking about, uh, I think this is in Arizona, but you can see the headlines uh, there. And there's another one here from uh, North Carolina, sewage treatment. So, and then what's this? And this, uh, wherever Columbia is, I'm not sure, uh, anyway. That, that you, that's an article about putting fish, you know, local fish, you know, the native fish into the lagoon, cleaning up the, the slurry at the bottom, which is sometimes, a, you know, more than a problem to get rid of. Was listening to some program just recently about, you know, farmers putting it on their fields, but it has all sorts of uh, things that you want to put on your fields and get into your food. So anyway, I'm getting near to the end. Uh, this is this is the, the trail on uh, uh, Rose Lane, uh, and this this is a non-native uh, false spirea, and there is a uh, what is that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, Admiral. 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 
yeah, yeah. And I saw that and I was taking a picture and then I saw this. Anybody know what that is? Uh, what is it? Swallowtail? No, 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 it isn't. It's a bit small. It's a bit you no. Know. I, I, I know you don't know actually. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why I'm asking. It's it's this thing here. Oh, oh, wow. oh is, that one. So oh. the question is is it a moth or a butterfly? Moth. It looks like a moth. moth. It's, it's a moth. Yeah, it's absolutely. A moth. That's right. And it's, 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 and, and, and I'm not sneezing, it's something called a neck chucker uh, or yellow collared moth. And how do I know that? Mm. My vast reading and everything. How I know it is I've got iNaturist on the phone. Does everybody have this? No. It's absolutely brilliant. It's free. Uh, you, you, you take a picture of it and right. almost. Simply, you get something coming up saying we're not quite sure what this is, but it could be. And sometimes it could be as only one suggestion, and sometimes <laughs> it's ten. But it, it that honestly is so useful, and it's not just for, <coughs> it's not just for butterflies; it's birds and everything. If you, you just take a picture, click it on, it goes up there, and you. And if it's something unusual, you that you, or if it's not, you can post it. You send it to them, and then you get all these experts looking at it. And, can I ask uh, a question? Can I, yeah. I just on that particular app? Do they does it recognize bird calls? Uh, I or don't think so. I think there might be one out though. That would be there's, nice. there's a program, an app called Merlin, that's from the uh, Cornell um, Ornithology Lab. That's very good for birds. <coughs> that's that's great. Thank you, Richard. I, I, Merlin, yeah. M e r l i n. Yes. Thank yeah. You so much. There's another one called Bird Identifier, and that one is free, and it does recognize calls. Yeah, it does. Right. That's what the kids have. Yeah. Super. Okay. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, sure. forgot why I put this. This this is another non-native plant to uh, bother. I'm attacking Richard. I'm not. This 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 is a total bee magnet. And, even if it's banned, I, I, I still am very tempted to get it. It's uh, Argentinian verbena. It's a sort of tall, leggy plant. You know, you can see through it and so on. But it's just loaded with, with bees. And there you can see the monarch, definitely. There is, is one of the ladies, either painted or otherwise, an American. And there's another one. And I think there are others around it. So I, I, I put that up just... I, it, they were selling it down in... in at, the St. Stephen uh, last summer and the plants looked, you know, sort of spindly sort of things and nobody was buying them and, and I, I, I bought quite a few. They're, they're annual. They're, they say that, you know, they tend to self-seed but they've not ever self-seeded for me and I've tried to grow them too and, you know, after, after doing, you know, having them on heated pads and stuff, I end up at the end of the summer with things about an inch high, so I don't know. Um, we, have, we have a native verbena as well. Oh yeah, there's lots of verbenas around, mm -hmm. but this, this this one, yeah, I agree. And I've got, this, uh, yeah, I've got I've got a, a blue one in the yard. Yeah, the reason I put that up is not to show I'm growing non-native plants, but I wanted to to put this in. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Any yeah. idea what that is? No, uh, but uh, hummingbird moth. No, it isn't. Unfortunately, I, and I had those. I had that. I had that, that. I think on the milkweed that too. The milk milkweed's a great pollinator, by the way, if you're growing it. Uh, I, I get James Whitehead's bees all the time on it. Yeah. Uh, all sorts of other. You know, it, it's nice flat tops or butterflies like, and it's not just just the monarchs. I think there's another one up there. It's a thing called a skipper. At one time, skippers were thought to be intermediate between butterflies and and moths. You know, the moths are sort of slender bodies, and uh, and you know. A simple antennae and so on, and and uh, moths are, tend to be fatter, bulkier, and hairy and so on. This was thought to be, as I say, an intermediate. Now it's been put in with the butterflies for some reason. Yeah. Uh, uh, and there's there's a picture of it standing still, but in, obviously yeah. still from Google. Uh, their their antenna apparently is sort of hook shaped, a bit like croquet hook, croquet crochet um, hooks. And they're, they're they're hairy and they, and they they sort of zip around you know they and um, need to watch. 
so planting planting for uh, butterflies also is planting for bees and is also planting for birds uh, and and birds uh, eat an awful lot of insects so the you have the insect producing plants or the feeding plants and this is a hummingbird and and uh, I think 70% somewhere I read of a hummingbird's diet is actually insects and they can zip out from the trees um, and catch these things uh, and they're, 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 they're like um, a flycatcher almost. Um, so uh, insects, you know, birds like insects and this is uh, one of these uh, hummingbird, not hummingbird, uh, bees nests in the, in the yard which mm. It's the bloody uh, woodpecker. Woodpecker found. <laughs> downy, downy woodpecker. Uh, is you think it's, is it a downy? I wasn't sure. Is it a downy or a hairy? I think it, so. Sorry. I think so. You think it's the bigger one? Yeah. No, I think it's the downy. I think it's the oh, downy. Oh yeah, yeah. I, that's where I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. Oh yeah, you said downy. Yeah. This also, I think, is 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 a very useful free. Uh, paper. It's it's uh, it's about 16 pages long. It tells you an awful lot about butterflies and moths and so on. It's it's great and uh, it, it's free. It's online. It's publication 7151. There's the uh, web page again for it. And I, and I I think that that would it's an easy easy read. It's well written and it's got so much information in it. So I think it's uh, it's well worth, worth, worth looking after. So I can I can get that to somebody to send round if you like. All right, thank you. So uh, this is this is really what I'm here for. Is you know, I want advice and suggestions from you guys. And if uh, if if you have any used plants that you have no need of, or if.